I am Brooke. <laughs> and I'm Kimberly. This is my mom. That's my daughter. And here we are. <laughs> We're coming to you from Haymarket, Virginia, where it is Sunday. What's the day, Brooke? 11 22. <laughs> the Sunday before Thanksgiving, which is November 22nd. Yes. <laughs> Um, this is our first episode, if you can't tell, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of cutting, I, so when you see this later, mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of, a lot of cutting. <laughs> Alright, first, hey Brooke, what's in your cup? Um, I have some. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you were laughing, what's in my cup? <laughs> Stop it's acting. My Rising Tide Fiber Co. cup, which I love. Um, I have peppermint tea in here. What do you have, Brooke? I have my M&M cup with some peppermint hot chocolate with some whipped cream on top that some people don't like. I don't like whipped cream. I like peppermint mm -hmm. hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. I don't like whipped cream. It's just... The knitter. Are you a knitter, Brooke? No. <laughs> Are you a crocheter? No. This is a knitting and fiber related podcast or YouTube channel. So Brooke's here for comedic entertainment, to look, <laughs> <laughs> to look pretty and to hold things up for me. And she will have her own take when we talk about what we're listening to, reading to, and watching. She does a lot of that. So she'll talk a lot more then. So one of the podcasts that I love is Happy Knits. Um, Yolanda and Jordan are in Texas and they are one of my favorite podcasts. I love it. I actually laugh out loud a lot during those podcasts. They're so cute. Yolanda is the mom and Jordan is her son who doesn't knit, but he is so funny and so cute and he holds up everything and helps out. He's just very so cute, he's very cute. So anyways, um, I was watching that and my daughter saw it and she's like, Hey mom, we should do something like that. I'm like, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do it. So it's 2020. Where everything's crazy, might as well start a YouTube channel. That, yeah, right? I mean, I had nothing, I had no plans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now that we got that out of the way in a very rough and tumble kind of way, that's for a lot of laughs. <laughs> um, the first thing I want to talk about are my foes. So I don't know, I hear people call it different things because they're finished objects, but people will call it FOs or FOs. And so I don't know if I'm saying it wrong, so I call it FOs. So I, I don't know. know if it's like, like when I hear maybe it. you're not supposed to say FOs versus to say FOs. Why don't you comment below if you think, below, not below. Just comment below if you think it should be called FOs or FOs or it doesn't matter. Is it the right way? When I hear FOs, I think of UFOs. Okay, well, it's not, well some people do call UFOs because it's an unfinished object. But that's not the same thing as what I'm talking about. But I call those whips, works in progress. So there are different things. Did I whip? I don't know. Okay. So, oh, before I get to post, yeah, I've already messed this up. What am I wearing? What am I wearing, Brooke? A shawl. <laughs> I am wearing my cowl dana, which is a cowl that connects in the back, um, but comes down like a bandana. And this is my Pitter Powder Cowl Dana by Raging Pearl Wind, which is Rebecca McKenzie. She's an amazing designer. Um, I did this as a test knit for her. And it is super long for me. I'm 5'10", so I need it to be nice and long and feel like I'm not like humongous and something. So this is great. It is super squishy. Just the the stitch pattern makes it just super plump and squishy. I just love it. It's super nice mm -hmm. and warm. I have the color. It's like a yeah. mermaid. It's like a mermaid. Me too. I, I was kind of going for that vibe. Oh my God. <laughs> so I was like, I want to show it to you now because I may end up taking it off later because it is really warm in here. Okay, so my first finished object, which is another Raging Pearl Wind knit that I test. I'm like her obsessive tester. I love all her and things. And her friends. And her friend. <laughs> I love Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Um, I love Rebecca. I know, Rebecca's pretty cool. Um, so it is the Francie shawl, which you see behind us. So Rebecca had uh, size inclusivity mainly involved in this, which is three sizes. I believe it's three. I chose the largest. I always like a large shawl. I left head on 5'10". My daughter's 5'11". 5'10", 3 fourths, actually. 5'10", 3 fourths. Okay. Uh, so we like to have things that are nice and big. They can wrap all around us and we feel we can feel nice and dainty in it, even though we're not dainty. But um, I, she actually knit her original sample in a speckle yarn, which I know it doesn't really show here, but I usually knit with speckle yarn. I love speckles. Um, but I was using stash for this one, which is why I got this, but I love it. This one, I wanted more of a shawl I could wear all the time. Um, it would pair really well with other colors. And I've made so many shawls 
that um, I wanted to make sure I didn't repeat the same colors I already had. So I already have a lot of purple, a lot of purple speckles, but so I wanted something a little different. So this is like a navy. Purple. A lot of purple. I do. I love purple. It's my favorite. So this is navy. It's got a pico bind off, which is amazing. This thing, I don't know if you can tell how big it is, but it's so big. It wraps all the way around. So I, like when someone, like if you take it like that, it's like wingspan like crazy. I'll insert a picture of how big it is. We took the photos for it for Rebecca. Um, but it is really fun. I knit it in Barocco Ultra Wool in the fine, the fingering, in the color Ocean, in case you guys want to like, you know, get the same thing. But it's very soft and squishy. I just love it. It is a lot of garter stitch, not hard lace. Um, so it's a nice thing, I think, for beginners. Nice beginner pattern. But they also have a smaller version and like a medium version. So if you don't want to make something so big, because it does take a long time to knit something this large, not that long. It took me about, actually, it took me about three weeks. It was pretty long, but... It was really fun. It's a really great pattern. You guys should check it out. Okay, my next. I agree. I have, I agree. So I have a lot of finished objects. It's hard for your first podcast. Like, what are you going to talk about for your finished objects? So I'm just only going to do my most recent ones. Um, but a lot of it I can't show because a lot of them are Christmas gifts. So, and I don't know if they're going to be watching this podcast before Christmas. Probably not because I'm not, maybe not going to tell a lot of family about it first. I <laughs> We're going to see know. how this thing goes. But just in case. I'm not going to like post this here, but I'll post those after in our episode after Christmas or closer to Christmas. Um, but the main thing I'm mainly, mainly working on, which I have a lot of finished objects for, are these hats I'm making for the foster kids, um, the local foster kids. Um, so what I do every year, I say every year, but I just started this last year. So it's really every year as of last year. Every year soon to come as well. <laughs> yeah. So what I do is I knit up hats that they can put in their stockings. So I've knit 22 so far. I need eight more, which I don't need. They said they, I don't have to give them 30, but of course then I want to. Um, so I've mainly been actually doing um, a couple different patterns that are really easy. The barley hat, um, Brooke, from Tin Can Knits, which is a nice, simple, quick knit that has a lot of like nice dimension. And they knit up super quick. Um, and it's just worsted weights for the barley hat. And they also have a barley light, I believe. So you can use like a fingering yarn for it, which I've made for a baby hat before. But so these are nice and quick. Um, and of course, all the yarn I use for these foster, or for the hats for the foster kids are acrylic because they're easy to throw in the wash and they can don't have to worry about ruining wool. Uh, the other hat that I'm actually doing a lot more of because I have um, I'm using bulky uh, weight yarn or super bulky because it does knit up faster and I'm kind of on a time crunch here because I need them by December 3rd. See, this one's probably like my favorite. Yeah, why don't honestly. you show that one? So I like, it's like so cute. Like this one's probably my favorite. And I also like this one right here. These are like really cute and I mean, like I was watching it and I'm just like, that's a really good color, mom. This is a really good color. <laughs> she helps um, me out a lot when I'm I asking what color colors. Um, so there's different variations of this. This is called the um, Noku Beanie by Smeeny Beanie Knits. Um, and so I think these, this one is the one I use, like she offers a, like a two color and a three color instructions, but really, which I think these two exemplify. Um, and of course she has palms on hers. I'm not gonna include palms because you can't really wash them. And so we're just having like a slouchy hats. Um, they knit up really fast, um, but they're a great way I found to use up all my scrap yarn. So like this, for example, is all scrap. So I just kind of knit until I ran out and it still looks really cute and you got your scraps done and it's a nice squishy hat for people, for children who need it. Cause like people, like my mom has like a bag of scrap <laughs> yarn. So not anymore. Cause I actually use up all of my scraps. Really? So I use all, all of it up. <laughs> oh my well, God. all of my bulk, super bulk oh. scraps. So like this was the first one I used all one color because I started new skinny yarn. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, so those are the main things of finished objects. However, now we're in whips. Now it's our first episode, so I don't want to get too crazy. I have a ton of whips. I mean, works in progress. I love, I love casting on new projects and I don't stress out if I put it down. Like if I just kind of push pause on that because something else I want to get done sooner. It doesn't bother me. Now I know it bothers a lot of people. Um, one thing, if I have a deadline, I'm obviously like if I'm testing, which I love to test knit, 
I will obviously kind of keep knitting that one. But what I do is I like to not get bored. If I knit the same thing for too long, it gets kind of boring for me. So I love to be able to switch in between. I'm not going to tell you all of them. It's going to seem like I'm telling you all of them because there are a lot, but there are a lot more I'm not telling you. I can you. definitely vouch for that. Like she will walk down the stairs and watch like a movie with like bags all over, like up and down her arms. And I'm just like, mom, why do you have so many bags? She's like, I, know, I don't know what I'm going to feel like when I get down there. <laughs> Yes, I have a lot. So we're gonna go through some. Though basically these are the ones that I'm working on currently. So my most important things I do have a deadline for are my Thanksgiving socks. And it's only because I have a deadline because Thanksgiving is coming and I want to wear my Thanksgiving socks on Thanksgiving. Um, I have my Thanksgiving socks in my Scrappy Angel uh, peekaboo bag. She's having an update, um, I believe, this Saturday, which is Small Business Saturday, the 28th, around Thanksgiving. So I love this bag. I mean, look at it, it's just so cute. And it's got the peekaboo window, it sits up straight. I can do two skeins of yarn in this for two at a time socks, which is great, which I didn't do for these, but I can if I wanted to, which mm -hmm. more importantly. There are no pockets in this, but I don't, I know a lot of people really love pockets, I like pockets, but I always have my notions in little containers anyway, so I don't necessarily need pockets, but. Let's talk about how cute these are though. This is I actually Cottontail that. Farm. She makes these cute little bags. I have a couple of their bags. I love these triangle bags. I don't know why. You can easily, you can open it up, you can get to all your notions in there. And it doesn't take up a lot of room. Okay, so I have already one finished, which I was gonna bring these on with sock blockers, but I already forgot. Um, so this is yarn by Haverland um, on her Yakety Yak base, which is, I've never knit with the Yak blend before. It is so luxurious. Oh my goodness. I'm hoping I have enough left over to make little fingerless mitts because that would be amazing. Luxurious guys. Luxurious. But I love this like gentle fade. So what I did was I did just stockinette, obviously, two by two ribbing, um, 64 inch cast on. I used a size US one needle. Um, I did an afterthought heel on these because I like the spiral on the stripes of the heel, which I'll insert a picture here that will show the, these on sock blockers for you. What I don't like, so I normally, when I knit these, I knit both tubes and then I do the afterthought because that's just how you do it. I mean, that's how I do it. <laughs> However, when I knit this at the end where I marked my heel, I actually was at the green stripes and I marked it in the red. So it'd be perfect to go right in between the reds would be the green. I don't know if that makes sense to you. So I went ahead and did this first. I don't love that there's like one row of like, you wanna show this like dark color. However, it's like a nice like purple that she has yeah. like one on the heel. I don't love that. However, when I'm wearing them, you're not gonna see them because they're gonna be on my heel. So anyways, here's how far I am. I'm actually almost, I'm at, I'm at the toe. So I'm doing the toe right now. I'm using uh, also nine inch circular needles, which I love. I know some people don't. It does take a little bit to get used to. You do have to use them a little bit to get used to the small movements, but I love them. It goes super fast um, when you're not doing obviously two at a time. But I'm almost done. I've already marked my heel. Everything is color coded. It just makes it easier for me. Um, I leave these markers on the first sock and then I just transfer them as I knit, if that makes any sense. So I know my progress. Um, but I'm all the way done marking my thing. So this is going to be very nice. I'm very excited about it. And here's what I have left. So you can kind of see the ball. Brooke, you wanna show them the ball? Who made this yarn again? Haverland, it's on their Yakety Yak base. Oh, I didn't mention the color. So this is Southern Maryland Sweater Weather. Sweater. This is Southern, sweater, sweater, weather, Southern. Weather. Southern Maryland sweater weather because yeah. obviously Haverland is in Maryland. Mm -hmm. So it's a local dyer, which I love. I love supporting local dyers. And so this is really great. And it comes in these cool stripey balls. Anyways, so that's that. All right, this is my most important one I'm trying to work on besides my foster hats. Those are very important, um, but I have a little more time. So they're due December 3rd. Um, so that's my scrappy angel bag. Okay, so the next one we're gonna talk about is another, it's in another Scrappy Angel bag. Mm, I like <laughs> this one. I'm a little obsessed with Angel. Her name is actually Angel from Scrappy Angels. Um, this, we like to call it our knitting group, we like to call this our Mary Poppin bags. Oh. Because it's like a perfect tapestry bag. If 
I think we already finished. We had a little interruption from my son who's back home from college. So little side story, we went and picked him up on Friday. They're gonna finish the semester off virtually um, because coming back home in between for holidays, they didn't wanna risk, you know, any more, you know, outbreaks of COVID. So we're really excited to have him home. So we really haven't seen him much since August. So it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so Scrappy Angel, who's having an update? I know I've said this, but she's having an update on Small Business Saturday. You have to check it out. This we call, we call her Mary Poppins bag. However, it's called something. I wanna say, I always call it a weekender, but it's not. <laughs> I will put right here what it's actually called. Um, but I just love it. It's got um, handles. It's got this great, um, it, so it looks small. It zips up, and here, let me open it. But it's so roomy what it is, which I've never seen another one like this. Is this, I mean, I'm sure there are like this. I haven't seen them. Um, it's got this wire frame, so when you open it, it's like a carpet bag. It's, it's like and it sits it. up flat, and you can fit so much in there. So I have two skeins and two socks in here, and it's got pockets on both sides. It's just amazing. So Brooke's gonna hold up my next whip, which is my husband's socks, Damon. No, my husband, Damon. They're gonna look really big, so they might look like hats for some of you. <laughs> she always comes in, she's like, they look like hats. Seriously, I'm like, they're not hats. They so how, like how hats. large are dad's feet? Uh, Size what shoe? Like 15. 15. And so these are my first socks um, I'm making him because who wants to make, <laughs> who wants to make a size 15 sock? I mean, as you can tell, we are a very tall family. So I mean, she has a lot of work cut out for her when she makes us stuff, especially my, for our socks. Yes, my socks are size 10. Brooks are size 12. So even hers, I was like, okay, here we go, Brooke. I'm gonna make you a pair of socks. <laughs> and then, but my husband is size 15. So what I'm doing, this is why I learned, I just learned two at a time toe up because there is, I guess this is the front, because I wanna make sure I have enough yarn. Like I don't wanna run out of yarn. So what I do, yeah, show how big it is. Seriously. I mean, there's the heel. He okay, also he this. also likes um, this like scratchy yarn, so, like, mm -hmm. which I realized that actually- Scratchy wool. wool. Like I have friends who actually rather have like, a scratchy sweater. Really? Yeah, I have friends who rather have a scratchy sweater because they said that it's actually um, comfortable in a way. And I don't get it because like yeah, when I'm giving right. them hugs, I'm just like, okay, yeah. this is a nice hug. Let's just back away now. Yeah. My husband loves the scratchiness, which is perfect. So what we did, I'm using, what yarn here is are the yarn. You want to show them the, two, the little bit of yarn we have left? So this is the Lopi Hosu Band, I think is how I say it. My friend Lorelai will... Um, Tell me if I said it wrong. <laughs> but Brooke, you can hold up the um, label. It's Icelandic. I actually got it from Shop Icelandic online. It's a really good deal. They have a um, bunch of sales. That's a very cute label. I know. So I basically used two, I got two skeins for him because I wasn't sure. I know it's worsted, so I'm using a size five needle. So normally I wouldn't be using that for socks, but it's this worsted size five and so I had to have him I've had him try them on a lot along the way just with because, his eyes closed yeah with his eyes closed because these are Christmas gifts so you can't see them but um I just did a I actually went on my friend Lorelai from knit group hi Lorelai uh she actually knit these first and so she keeps buying the yarn so she was telling us all about it and that's how we ordered it so I actually went on her Ravelry page if you're able to go on Ravelry and um I just did like this ribbing. So I figure if they're a little loose, I just did a two by one ribbing across the top of the foot. And then now that I'm up to the leg, I've done it all the way around. So it'll at least hug his leg if it's a little bit loose, but he does have large feet. This is my, you want to tell my Shelly Can stitch marker or progress keeper. I don't know, I always help it's mom like, with <laughs> her stitch markers cause like there are so many cute ones. It's like a holographic sparkly yarn snowball or something. I don't know. It's really cute. It's just so adorable. I, I love like all of our stitch markers. Like, I just like, I'm just like, oh, they're so cute. So I have these giant socks, two things of yarn, and it's, you can see how much room is in there. I mean, these things can fit, and it just zips right up. It's amazing. I love this bag. You guys should go check it out. Okay. I'm going to link everything down in show notes um, down below so that you can just go. Um, the links will take you probably to Instagram or their purchasing page. Um, also, all of my patterns 
will be linked in Ravelry. I know a lot of people can't access Ravelry right now, so when I can, I will find um, a Ravelry access and then a non-Ravelry access when applicable, which most of the time I think there is, but sometimes there's not. Just don't worry, you will get there. <laughs> you will get to your patterns, you'll get to your bags, you'll get there, okay? We'll make sure of it. <laughs> I'll get there, don't worry. All right, so my next whip, I know I'm not even done, I'm not even, my, this one, my slip extravaganza. Okay. So, if you guys all know, Slip Stravaganza by Stephen West, which is the latest mystery knit along. It was my first time doing a Stephen West item and a mystery knit along, no matter whose it is. So, it's the first time doing both, and it was so exciting. And I, so I used, I wanted to use Dash, which I did. Um, it was really fun. All you have to do is buy the pattern, you get to participate in this knit along. He releases clues um, every Friday in October. So, he had four. It was amazing. I loved it, and I'm still working on it. <laughs> So actually my goal, so my goal with this was to keep up for at least the first two clues. So I know Stephen West shawls can be huge. Like they're just, they're always huge, which I love. Um, so I wanted to at least keep up with the first two, but I actually kept up all the way to clue four. Um, and then I wondered why he said in his video, okay, well, we're gonna knit all this along together for November. And I'm like, why would it take all of November to, to do the last clue, which is the, um, the border. Well, when the, as everyone can say, when the first row of the border, because it was like 486 stitches, increased to over 900 in one row, I was like, oh my gosh. So a row will take me like 45 minutes at least to do a row now. So I'm just kind of like going through it. But once again, I don't put pressure on myself, so I don't have a deadline for this. I'd like to finish it by the first of the year, but no pressure. Um, I don't really have a deadline for it. So this is actually, I'm housing it in my Button Jar Studios Fat Bottom Girl bag. I love this. I love how open it is. And it's got pockets for the inside. Look, I fit all of my items in there. I've got like a pattern on the pockets. I know, I like how it's different. It's got leather handles, which is nice. So it's great to be able to like have it home and just have your stuff in, which is great. Because it doesn't have a closure, but I don't need one. So it's not a big deal. So here is my... <laughs> Another thing is, uh, Steven said 40 inch cable for your shawl, which worked fabulous for everything until you put on 900 stitches. So it's super squished. Some people like having their knitting super squished. I am not a fan of it. Um, so I may, I'm probably going to end up getting like a bigger cable because we're still increasing. Like I'm over 900 stitches, but every row you still increase. You're like aiming it out of my face every still single time. <laughs> Watch out, these are sharp. Okay, so I so I use all scraps, which I just love. Brooke, do you want to hold it up so I can like stretch it out? I don't even know. I know, just hold this. And I'm um, okay. So this was the beginning. This was I helped with the colors, by the way. Yes, because I, as you probably know, if you're a knitter, you have a lot of stash. So this is was the first clue, which was this honeycomb, which was amazing. Then Steven got crazy and released a bonus clue, which was fun, which was this. Then we have the diamond section. Then we have more now on the border, which is stripes. It's the stripe points, which is chevron -y. It's so cool. Um, it's really fun. I love it. I'm gonna go through my yarn choices. Um, I literally have, I don't know how many, it's like 50 or 60 <laughs> stitch markers on here. I basically emptied the bag. That's what my husband joked about when he walked by one time. He's like, are you just like <laughs> finding every single stitch marker you have? I'm like, yeah, pretty much like any, <laughs> all the stitch markers. She's gonna start using paper clips soon. <laughs> I know, I mean, yeah, I, you know, you run out of things. So if you wanna hold up my yarn, Brooke. Okay, so the first yarn was my main color. I'm gonna hold that up. That is by Shalimar Yarns, and that is in the color Damson. I love it, it's like lavender. Um, the next color is Malabrigo, and that is in water green. That's a good combination, I like that color. And then my contrast color two was this, which I'm currently using, so I'll stretch it out for you. I believe it's Tamarillo, but it could be Tamarillo. It's like a great, like a pinky red, right? Yeah. I it's pink, but it looks almost red. It's like a light red, but it's like a dark red. Tamarillo. I know, it I looks know. dark, it's, it's like, like a pink. It just looks red in this. It's more pink, I would say. Like a and light then, maroon. Yeah. A light maroon. A light maroon. A light maroon. It is not light maroon, <laughs> folks. <laughs> Do not listen to her. All right, and then my favorite out of all the colors, I just love the tonal of this, is also Shalimar Yarns and this 
Asilomar, Asilomar. I love that, it's so tonal, it's so pretty. I just love it, it's my favorite one. And then I also use a little bit of Kim Dye's yarn. Um, I don't remember the color, but it is a little bit of um, mohair, which, which is so great about Stephen West designs that you can just do whatever you want. So for one of these rows, I threw in some mohair and just made it soft, it was so fun. And that's just scraps that I had from a hat that I made, my super slouchy beanie or something like that which I'll show later, so I'll probably wear it later. I need to wear it. Did I get it back? Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. My next whip, because I'm still not done. Okay. All right, we're good, we're getting there. So my last whip before we get into blanket shop talk <laughs> is my Sunset Highway sweater by Caitlin Hunter. Show me the bag. Uh, my bag actually was a gift from my husband. Isn't it so cute? I think it's um, a Knit Picks tote. It's so cute and I love it and it's nice and big. Okay, so here's what I have for my Sunset Highway so far. This is a long time, because I don't also have a um, deadline on this as well. I'm trying to figure out which way, this is the front. Okay, so here is my Sunset Highway, obviously pre-blocked, because it's not done. So Brooke, do you wanna hold this side? Um, so yes, what I- sleeve on that side. Yep, so I've started, I'm on the sleeve. Which is great. So I tried this on, obviously, so I want to make sure. Um, it's so soft. I know, right? Um, I use all stash yarn for this. So I started this towards like probably beginning, middle of quarantine when I'm like, I'm going to use stash and be amazing. And then I rewarded myself as soon as stores opened by buying way more yarn than I use in stash. That's how I, that's how it happens. <laughs> I'm a model, guys. All right. So let's go through the yarn first before I forget. Actually. So this is, this first one, this purple one is Anzula brand and it's Freesia is the color. Hold up close. It's like a deep purple that's coming out a little pink purple, but it's definitely like it is back here. It's like a yeah, it's like royal purple, I would say, mm -hmm. that's which I love. Like, it makes it a little bit more lighter with the light, but it's actually like with my eyes. Um, it's a little darker, in my, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> and I always like purple. Um, this next color is, the colorway is called Berry Bramble, and it's by Less Traveled Yarns, which I love them. I love that. I just love all the colors. I love the gold and the purple with the neutral. I don't know, it's just so nice. And then my next color in the color work, this green, is the colorway is called Serengeti. And that is by Hedgehog Fibers, which I just love that green with the pinks, pops of pink. And then my main color is this great um, color I found from Rising Tide Fiber Co. Um, and it's called Wish Upon a Starfish. Isn't that oh, nice? cute? Isn't that I, cute? Like that I just love it. So it actually looks, when you have it in the skein, which is why I bought it, because she actually, I found her at a like a fiber fair that we had locally. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks very neutrally, which is so good, but it knits up a little lavendery, which is really nice. So you can see it here on the main body is this Wish Upon a Starfish. So everything is the same up here, but since I'm using stash, I only have two skeins of the main color. So I've made some alterations to my sleeve. This is all the same, but what I did was instead of the cuff, because the cuff is gonna be six inches. Um, and I really like a nice long cuff. Some people like they switch the cuff length or whatever they need to do with the so yarn. Like this is the cuff for the cuff. Right? Yes, that's the cuff. So this is supposed to have a really long cuff, which I love and I wanna make it really long. So I switched it to instead of the main color cuff, I switched it to the green of Serengeti, which is Hedgehog Fibers, because I love this green. So I, that's what I'm working on now for the first one. And then I'll do, so what I'm doing is, I switch, once I finish off the first skein, I switch to the sleeve. And then I'm gonna do the next sleeve to make sure that I can just keep knitting the rest of the main color until I run out. And then what I can do is I'm expecting if I do run out before I get to the, the, the cuff or the binding or the ribbing, the ribbing on the bottom of the sweater, I'll switch to another color. So I'll use whatever I have left for the ribbing on the bottom if I need to. But I'm very kind of, I'm pretty flexible when it comes to like my knitting. I can switch up colors and change things around if I need to. I don't, you know, I try not to stress out about it too much because knitting is supposed to be fun. Mm -hmm. And why have a fun hobby if you're going to stress yourself out about it? Now I get it if something's not working because I have a Tinya sweater 
that has been cast on like four times with the same yarn it's and in now timeout. it's in timeout. It's been like a year. It's been in timeout for a year because that yarn that I bought will be a Tinya someday. However, it was not, it was just, it was, yeah. So that was frustrating. But then when you get so frustrated, you're like, I can't, it's not funny anymore. I just can't. So I'm starting to feel like I want to try again. It's been mm -hmm. a year. <laughs> so I will eventually do it again. Three hundred sixty-five five days, you know, it's been, it's been good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so next we're in the blanket shop. Okay, so I have two blankets in progress. Um, and I actually have a couple more I want to cast on because I just love blankets. Sometimes, there have been some times, especially during quarantine, where that's all I want to do is just knit on my blanket. It's very therapeutic, therapeutic and um, calming and it's, and it's, you know, I try, I make them to, I make them scrappy. So I'm constantly changing colors and changing yarn. I have to pick out a new color and I don't do like a straight single like knit or garter because I just, garter is too, it, it makes me, I get bored easily when it comes to that. So my first one, which is my most favorite, which Brooke is thinking that she wants to steal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I steal all her blankets. So like just her <laughs> thinking that this one's not going to get stolen is just like foolish of her. <laughs> all right. It's my bits and bobs blanket. All right, so Brooke, you wanna hold up what we have so far? So this is what I have so far for my Bits and Bobs blanket. The Bits and Bobs blanket is by Kay Jones. It's basically a modified fisherman's rib. And I made, and I did a couple cast on tries because I didn't know how wide I wanted. I wanted to basically be like a me blanket, like a couch or like just laying, you know? So I wanted to go over me and then have some on each side. When she says me blanket, she means me blanket. <laughs> That's what she means. I didn't want it to be bed blanket. Yeah, but I wanted to make it long because we're tall, so everything has to be long. Anyways, what you do is you hold two fingering waists together and do this uh, modified fisherman's rib, and then you're supposed to have a main color, and then you use scraps or whatever to work into the rest of the blanket you hold together. Well, what I did is I'm using a main color, so full skeins of yarn from Sash. So whatever I know that I'm probably not going to use in like a, a garment project, I'm throwing it in my blanket. And then I'm using all of my scraps as my other one I'm holding together with it, which is why you have all these different colors. And I love it. I think I want, already want to do another one. And what I'll do is I'll hold together because I'm, I'm losing, I do love it, but what I am, I'm losing some of my really cool scrap colors. If you're losing it because it's watercoloring in or marling in. So I think I want to hold it together with a, um, like a neutrally, like a, you know, like a cream or a white or whatever color. I think a cream so will go that, well. I think a cream will go well. So that my scrap skin. mini skeins will um, really shine. But other than that, I really love it. It's very therapeutic. I don't know why. It's like a basically a two cent repeat. It's amazing. You I love it. Call me that you're using all the scraps in that bag that you have. I do. <laughs> I use my scraps. So that it makes me feel very nice. Um, my next blankets are all kind of in the same bag here, which is my Cottontail Farm bag. I just love it. She likes bags. I do love bags. Now I have it folded in, but what it has, let me see if I can unfold it for you. I split, I think it's her sweater bag that you, it actually folds up and you can cinch this. So like it encloses as your project grows. So the other blanket I've started, which obviously is not a blanket yet, are, is the blanket of calm. Um, because you're used, you, it's crocheting squares and I know we've all, most of us have seen that. Most of us started doing it and I just kind of did it when I, you know, when I open up a new mini skein or whatever, I just make these little squares. Um, Brooke, do you want to show a square? Can I stretch it out? They're like really cute. Yeah. So while they're really cute, they're also pretty small. <laughs> so, I mean, it's how small they are from like way back here, right? So it's going to take a whole lot of them to make a real blanket. I'm not going to make a full size, you know bed blanket obviously but um i'm gonna make like a lap blanket or something really pretty with this so i have these obviously this doesn't really fit too much i just kind of drape it over the top because mm -hmm. i'm gonna show you a bag because it, it's kind of a whip but it's not a blanket i got this bag once again from scrappy angel um because it's for my blankets, but I'm currently using it for my foster kid hats because I have so much yarn. I just have it all in here all at once. So when I take my knitting, I have it all in one place. So look how giant this bag is. I mean, it is amazing. I know like a lot of times I'll be like, oh, look, they say an extra large knitting project bag and I get it. And it's like, 
you know. So anyways, this is my blanket bag. I don't know if she oh, calls it oh. a blanket bag. I think she might. Um, I'll put right here what it's called. Um, but she's even got an internal hook for your stitch markers or whatever. Um, there are no internal pockets. However, there is this great see-through pocket in the front, which has Scrappy Angels. I'm going to hold it up. Scrappy Angel. I'll try and get that reversed so you guys can see it. And then, not only that, it's a nice little see-through pocket, is this large pocket in the back. Now, you can't tell, but I have, I mean, in this pocket, I'm just going to pull out one handful, and it's not even everything that's in this pocket. I have, you know, stitch markers, and then all of this. I mean, and there's more in there, and there was tons more room. So there's tons of room in this bag. So this is eventually going to be, when I'm done with these foster kids hats, I'm going to transfer all my blankets over to here. Because, I mean, you could fit multiple blankets in this. I mean, this is really big, and it's awesome. I just love it. So the most fun part, sash acquisitions for me, because I went shopping. <laughs> um, so the most recent things I ordered, so I don't want to like go through all of them, because I, I do order a lot. So my first one is my lollipop yarn. I just want to show this. It comes in this cute bag, which, okay. So it's self-striping yarn, and it comes with a Lord. mini that is, like, the same as one of the colors in the stripes. So here it is, Brooke. I'm going to hold up the stripe. Very cute. Why don't you get this? This is lollipop yarn. This is the colorway Christmas Eve. So this is for one of my Christmas socks. So there's the mini skin that goes with it. It's a great tonal red, I and it's the same shaking. red. It's, it's not moving. You got the squeaky chair. All right, so, and it's so great, because here, can you hold up the lollipop um, symbol? She's on Instagram, lollipop yarn, I'll try and reverse that. Um, now, I was really excited because her stuff sells out so fast. When she has an update, it's super fast, so actually we all, our whole knitting group had it on, um, we had like a calendar set because she does it like early in the morning. So we all had our like alarm set for this, but I really wanted the Christmas Eve for some Christmas socks. Um, this might be actually like my Christmas day cast on. It'd be kind of fun because I know a lot of people do Christmas Eve cast ons, but our Christmas Eve's are so busy. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed about lollipop yarn is that on this little tag and in when you're buying it in her Etsy shop, it'll actually tell you the number of rows per color. So like they're not going to be all the same width. They're going to be thicker or thinner and so she's going to tell you the order and how thin or thick they are which is great um and also the names of the color she names each color that goes into this stripe it's amazing and then she tells you what the mini me is so this is stocking and then there's stocking it's like for instance seven rows of stocking five rows ash and soot three rows of wreath and then another five rows of ash and soot so I'm assuming so, the ash and soot is the gray. I'm assuming. And then the, what's, what was the green one? This is stocking, so that should be wreath. Wreath. Which makes sense. I it just makes sense. That's yes. cute. The Lemonade Shop had a ton of orders at the beginning of October. That's last month, right? So my yarn just now came. It was over a month. That's not normally it, but she's had so many orders. I'm so glad that she had so many orders. And I did not, I also don't get stressed out about my yarn not getting to me in a timely manner. Especially if I know it's dying to order, I know it's gonna take a long time. And it's just yarn people. And they're, single, they're a small business and it's like one person usually doing it. And I mean, if I know ahead of time it's gonna be a while, I, I don't get stressed out about it. If I'm now, if I'm wanting it for a project that's on a deadline, I just don't order things I know that's gonna take a long time. You just, you order things that you know you can get right away. Um, so my first one, which obviously I won't be using this year, I'll be using next year, which is great. I'm glad I already have some stash, is called Witchy Stitchy. So it's a Halloween yarn. Turn it sideways, rotate it. Isn't it so great? I love it. I love the, I don't know if that came across well, but that is like a neon orange. It looks a little more orangey in the camera, but it's like a neon orange. And I love this black, kind of like a charcoaly black. Oh my gosh, it's so great. And all the pops. I just love that. So that's going to be my next year's um, Halloween socks. And also, I mean, it's not 2020 without an FU 2020 yarn color. So, and of course it's purple. So I had to. So that's the lemonade shop. I love it. So you want to read what kind of yarn it is, Brooke? No, oh, <laughs> um, it's superwash, merino, and nylon. 
and it's also 437 yards and 100 grams. So it's 7525 you through that part. 7525 through the wash. I didn't though. know that was important. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, let's just send you a cute little card and then flip it around in the back, Brooke. It even has a Kitchener stitch on there for you. It's a card you want to keep because it's like a reminder on how to do it. See, I don't know what Kitchener st stitch is, so if I was trying to learn it, I would keep it. <laughs> While we went to go pick up my son, my son goes to college in Lexington, Virginia. They have a great yarn shop that I have yet to go to. So we've been going there to visit. We like visited the school last year, and then he's, you know, I get to visit him um, this year randomly, like for drive-bys basically. Um, it's about two and a half hours from our house. Um, they have a yarn store there, but I've never been able to go because they're closed on Sundays, which of course, and I, we could only, Magically, we were only able to go visit my son on Sunday. So we got to pick him up on a Friday. My first thing was like, oh, I can go to the yarn store. So um, it is House Mountain Yarn Company is the yarn shop. And it was superb. The owner was so great. They were, there was two. They were so sweet. So As soon as we walked in, actually, I, we walked in. I was like, oh, because you never know, right? We all know when we're traveling and we're going to go see a new yarn store, we know that it could be it could, it's a toss up, right? I could be in and out in 15 minutes because you know it's everything that I could get at my own local yarn shop, or it's gonna be amazing and I could be in there for hours. I walked in, and she goes, "I said, she oh said no. no, you didn't. You wait, said, wait, wow. Wait. You said, wow. You were like, wow, it's a night. Like, so when my daughter says, wow, who doesn't want to buy a single thing in there, said that." I knew it was great, and it does. It was very cute and very open and very well laid out. So I got these little Notion bags. Speaking of these little triangle bags, they had a ton. There was a local person who was sewing these, and she was upcycling from like garments she found at like a thrift store, I believe. And so she was making these. So all of my contributions when I bought these went back to her, which was great. And I don't know who it was. I should have asked. It didn't really mm -hmm. say on label who was making them. But they are just so cute. Brooke, you want to hold these up? So if you go there, you should ask. And like, these are really cute. And they're like exactly like what you would get like online. And like, and I got a little Christmassy one because who needs need a Christmas one? I think everyone needs a Christmas one in my opinion. But I mean, who? I mean, I need these for all of my bags. So I mean, it, it was just something I could just grab. Um, also, I got, oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> It is so perfectly lavender. It's coming up a little pink on camera. Maybe if you hold it closer, Brooke. No, nope, still a little pink. You know why? It's gotten darker in here. It's all that. All right, so we just noticed that it got really dark in here. And I'm gonna watch this back and realize it was probably like 10 minutes ago we didn't notice. So mm -hmm. we just turned on the light. So now back to what we have here. <laughs> all right. lavender. Is... That looks more like the color now. Okay, so Brooke, do you want to read what the brand is on the front? It is Viking Oko. Oko Alpaca. Oko Alpaca. It is Oko Logistic. And 100% super fine alpaca. So it's 100% alpaca, folks. It is so soft and squishy. I want to make a very luxurious hat out of this or something. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. I'm so excited about this. I'll get better at this, guys. I will read these labels, <laughs> like, so good. And then I got two of these. So actually, the yarn store owner suggested, since I was looking at something soft, hello, she was like, oh, you know what else is really soft, which I had never even heard of this. This is acrylic and alpaca mix you guys i think it's 70 percent acrylic and 30 percent alpaca which i've never seen before i'm sure it's like people know about this but i do not the soft factor mm -hmm. is insane brooke you want to hold it up it's like yeah definitely it's really so cool. soft Why don't we make a sweater it's cozy this? alpaca chunky i got two because i want to make a nice cozy cowl right up next to my neck and be all cozy and it's nice in fall colors right brooke yeah that's what we're kind of going for since, you know, fall. And of course I got these cute little gift tags. You are knit worthy. And they even have on the back, it tells you that, mm -hmm. like how to like, kind of like care for it. So like it's like hand wash, she wash, dry flat and tumble dry low. And it tells you the fiber, just in case. Yes. It's Ella Ray. Ella Ray. Sorry, Ella Ray. I think it's, Sorry. I think it's a company, but <laughs> okay. All right, so last but not least, because I was so excited 
um, Rove Yarn Co. She is a hand dyer out of Stanton, Virginia, and that's closer to Lexington, obviously. So I saw that she did a trunk show over there um, at House Mountain Yarns previously. I think it was like last month, and I'm like, oh man, I, I really want to see because I follow her on Instagram. So I went there, and she actually has some colors in the shop. So we got three. I'm gonna hold up one. I got three. This is the DK base, um, DK weight Dura DK. It's 75% merino, 20% nylon, and it's the house mountain color. So it's actually the yarn shop's own color. And I just, what were the, what were the vibes you got from this book? You said it was very, um, I got like Percy Jackson, right? Yeah, I got Percy Jackson. Very Percy Jackson. So I don't know if this is gonna be like a sweater body. I mean, I got three DKs, hopefully that would be enough, but I mean, for color works. I only say that for color work, cause you know. It's just so great. I don't know, like a shawl. I, th I think this would be a great sweater body for like color work. We'll see. It'll be something amazing. I'm so excited. Rove yarn. It's just the speckles are insane. like she said earlier. Like she loves speckles. I love speckles. I'm drawn to speckles. I just love them. So if you're near Lexington or driving through Lexington, House Mountain Yarn is amazing. But I went. I just had to have the robe. And you can only spend so much right before Christmas, right, Brooke? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, and our last acquisitions, which are, I would say, almost the most exciting because they are advents. Okay, so we each got an advent. Obviously, Brooks is not knitting, Yeah. obviously, but we've always had this tradition in our family where the kids always had advents. They had cute little trinkets or toys or something to open. It was usually like little Lego, little, little Lego figures or something like that to open for um, the kids. And then eventually, my husband and I are like, you know, we kind of want to do one. So my husband actually gets a whiskey one. <laughs> They're just like little bottles of different whiskeys from around the world. He used to feel like, you know, he's drinking. I he can feel cool. Some random whiskey that he would never get to try at home. So he gets, he loves those things. And I just started last year. We just started this last year for the grown up. So he got a whiskey one last year, which got another one this year because he loved it. Um, and then I, last year my advent was a Chelsea Lux advent and it was amazing. I got her sparkle base. It was so great, so fun. Um, I missed out on it this year because they sell out so fast. Um, which is fine. I was like, well, I've had to try other things. I know I love hers, but let's try out other people's. And so I think it was like, I was getting kind of close, like August, September, no, September, September. Um, and I got mine from Yarn Cafe Creations. She does a bunch of different advents, actually. They do a main Harry Potter one that's very popular, but then she came out with these 12 day advents, which of course I want 24 days, but she came out with two 12 day advents and one was the My Little Pony Christmas advent and the other one was the Strawberry Shortcake. And so I got both. <laughs> Cause then I'm like, hey, 12 plus 12 equals 24. So it actually works out into one advent. And so what actually it is though, is I get 11 mini skeins and then one full skein in each one. So I'm actually getting two full skeins. Um, and I have another friend who did the exact same thing as me. So what we did is we flipped a coin on which one to open first. It's gonna be the pink one. Um, so we do like the first 12 days and then I'll do the next 12 days and it'll be Christmas. Um, so this is a lot of fun. I'm just gonna open it up a little bit. I don't know which ones these are. I think most people only ordered one. So they knew which one came. I don't know which one's My Little Pony and which one's Strawberry Shortcake. I thought it would stay on the inside, but it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. They're still gonna be great. So um, me and my friend just flipped a coin and we, were, we said pink was heads. Well, it's like another <laughs> surprise. So yeah, like... it'll be another surprise. Um, it doesn't really matter. Let's see, but here, I'll just open one. They look kind of, actually I'll open both of those. This one's the pink one. I don't know which one it is. I mean, so isn't that great? I'm just thinking metal candy vibes. It comes with a little card. And then also it's got the full skein here. And then these are all individually wrapped, which is so cute. I love the sticker. I love that. I know. So they all have numbers. It's like this is day 10. And then you open them one day at a time. So that's the pink one. That's, that's the one we're really opening nice first. Package. That's like really good packaging. That is really good. I love these little boxes too. They're different colors. So if you've got one of these and you know, like, hey, I ordered My Little Pony and mine came in blue, just let me know down below. Just curiosity. But then here's the blue one which is similar. The main skein is wrapped, but then these come in little bags and they're all numbered. Isn't that cute? And now I don't know which one's which anymore. I it also gives me the metal pony vibes. I know, right? You think you know until you look at the next one, you're like, I don't know. 
but gonna be great no matter what. It doesn't really even matter. It's gonna be so amazing. So I got those. Brooke, what is your advent this year? Um, I got this Harry Potter because I'm a huge Harry Potter nerd about this. But they are these little pop figures, and you know, there's 24 obviously, but they're all. Harry Let me Potter. hold them up for you so you can you can talk while. So they're all like light. they're all like Harry Potter. So like you know, there's Harry Potter. The little Harry Potter pop figures, right? Each day you get a new one. Yeah, each day you okay, get a new the one. Back. You want to show them the back? That's what it looks like, I guess. And I, just, I, just, I love Harry Potter. Oh, I'm sorry, did I scratch you? No, you're fine. Uh, so that one we actually had to order. She found it in July, so put it on my list. And then they started releasing them. I'm sure it was before. I thought it wouldn't be a big deal, but I went to go order them. They were already sold out. So my husband actually got it for the October release. So we got that in October, but we had to order that in like August. It was crazy. It was very crazy. But my son still wanted his Star Wars Lego, Star Wars Lego set, which I thought was adorable. So off to college, and says, he still wanted it. I was like, my baby boy is still, you know. So I was like, yeah, no, I've grown up <laughs> into Harry Potter. Yes. <laughs> So I love that. So those are my acquisitions. That's all I'm going to show you because these are like the most recent. That's all I'm going to say. The most recent. Okay. Now we're going to go into dream knitting. <laughs> so I think every episode I'll have like, you know, a new couple dream knits I want to do. I'm going to insert pictures for these. Um, the first one is Effie Mitts by Skein Deer Knits. I think these are really cute. They're like color work um, mittens. They're really, hopefully I do them during the winter time, probably after Christmas because mm -hmm. I have so much knitting going on. Also the balloon jacket by Petite Knits. I think this looks really comfy, cozy. With the, I love the big sleeves and it's just something you can be like around the house in or go out in at the same time. And also Avalanche which looks amazing as well by Heidi Key Designs. I like that. Okay, now we're gonna talk about a section on our favorite podcasters. I'm gonna have a couple new ones each time because I watch a ton of them and Brooke ends up watching them with me half the time so she understands, obviously, since we've already mentioned them here. Happy Knits uh, with Yolanda and Jordan. We really like them. They are really fun and they have great information. I've watched a lot of Yolanda's um, tutorial videos. It's actually the one I watched for my two at a time toe up socks. So she has a great one and, and which Jordan's actually wearing now during the holiday season. He wears this great Santa hat. It's amazing. And it looks really like she has a tutorial video on how to make this Santa hat, which I'm totally going to be watching. I already, already bookmarked it. Um, it's nice to see me, guys. I'm wearing a Santa hat. <laughs> yeah, maybe we're going to be wearing that next time. Um, the next one, these next two are very new to me, and I love them. Uh, the Four Star Knits, which is Heather. I think she's near Chicago, um, but she's great. She's got some great um, stuff in there. It's just really, it's like how her, she sets everything up. It's just really nice. And also I Heart Knitting, which is Laura, um, and she's in um, I was in California, she's in Canada, um, which is great. And she actually makes bags. So she makes some great bags and I love all of her um, sweaters that she's been showing and she's very cute. So you definitely need to watch those, um, those podcasts. Now we're into the section where book has to talk about. So our reading and listening. So first, I love to read. I used to read a lot, but now that I'm super into my knitting, which I've always kind of been, but I was able to read more when I was commuting. So I haven't read in like a long time. And I'm really, I have a ton of books I want to read, especially this first one. So what I just did is I just downloaded Audible. Um, so that I could re just so I could read or listen to this book because I'm just so excited about it. It's Legendborn. I'll put a um, picture. Legendborn by Tracy Dion. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for it. I just listened to a sample of the narrator, and it sounds like a great. Because you know how if you're listening to a book, the narrator does have a big to do about it. It could be a great book, but if the narrator is not good, I mean, you're not going to really want to listen to it. And the narrator sounds amazing, so I'm very excited to get started on it. I think I might listen to some of it tonight, but I haven't even started. Brooke, on the other hand, is a prolific reader. I love reading. So I have five books. I'm just going to go through real quick. So right here, it's called Light Filters In. It's a poem. It's a it's by um, Caroline Kaufman. She's, it's a book of poems, right? Yeah, it's a book of poems. Um, basically, it talks about um, basically kind of like her story going through like a whole bunch of um, like stuff that happened in her life, like a lot of events. And she actually made this when she was 17. And then right here, we have um, Straight On Till Morning, which is kind of like a um, like a series where uh like your classic disney or your classic like fairy tales kind of get twisted so like this one's um what if one beach first traveled to neverland with captain hook and there's a whole bunch of others um by different authors by the same authors 
right here this book's called separation anxiety which is you know kind of like what it says about separation anxiety with a um like 30 year old and her dog and then this one which is probably like my mom's favorite um <laughs> it's fable I, why is it my favorite though because she's a redhead she's a beautiful redhead <laughs> um basically it's kind of more like an adventure um it's like i don't really know how to describe it it's like she um has to like take care of her own she, she's like on an island she has to like like get stuff from underwater to like make money um and she has to and she wants to go like find her father who dropped her off on an island basically this one basically it's actually two books put together um it's called love and other detours but it includes um love and gelato and love and luck um which is like once about a girl in italy and once about a girl in um ireland and it both like includes like love and like mysteries so yeah excellent um and so for how old are you i'm 15. so she's 15 she's a freshman in high school it's very exciting um so these books are being read by a 15 year old all right next up netflix and binge um so what have we been watching the most brooke I've been watching Julie and the Phantoms, which I've actually already finished. It is so good, but they're only like 25 minutes um, each episode, but it's really good. Mm -hmm. uh, if you like mus music and like musicals and like some drama, um, I definitely recommend. And I also watched The Queen's Gambit. Um, it's about a girl who was, a, who was an orphan and she's like obsessed with chess and she, she becomes like this um, famous chess player. Those are the two things that I've recently finished watching. So I thought you were gonna say that we've been watching a lot of homework and like Christmas a lot movies because we have. Movies. I literally was watching one while knitting my Halloween socks like in October. <laughs> so it's 2020. I feel like let's just we're watching them early. I I need this in my life. I need the happiness and joy of Christmas in my life. This and now more than ever. Um, we haven't started decorating yet, but only because we're waiting for my son. We almost did it like two weekends ago. We're, it was uh, my husband's idea. He's like, let's just do it. Let's just, we need Christmas. I'm like, we gotta wait for daylight. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna do it probably, we usually do it the weekend um, of, of Thanksgiving, like yeah. after Thanksgiving. So we'll just, we'll just wait and do that then. Um, we're watching a lot of Hallmark and Lifetime Christmas movies. Um, also, uh, I really want to watch the Dash and Lily series from Netflix. She promised me we were going to watch it, sorry, last weekend, and then all of a sudden we just I still haven't watched it, so I might have to watch it on my own. You said. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, we'll see. Also, just so you know, if you ever watched Virgin River on Netflix, oh my gosh, next season two comes out this week. So I think what I'm going to have to do is binge the first season all over again and then go right into season two because that was a year ago. I literally binged Virgin River on Netflix in a weekend. A year ago? Yeah. I binged it in a weekend, watched it. I think it might have been last. Like, I think it might have been like first part of January, but I could be wrong. So I binged it in a weekend, so I'm gonna have to rewatch it because I already forgot. It's been so long. I want it. I mean, I remember like the the main points, but I want it. I want it fresh in my memory for 2020. Man, like so much stuff has happened, but like it yeah. feels like it's going by so. It's like going by so fast. With, like, yeah. All this crap. That's, that's good. I'm glad it feels like it's going by so fast because it needs to go by faster. All right, so that's it. Uh, thanks for watching our first episode. Hopefully, you got some good things out of it, um, and that it was interesting to you. If you like it, click subscribe and like. Um, and then I will probably be doing this episode. I mean, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how long it takes me to edit, <laughs> but cause it'll probably come every few weeks, I would assume. Um, but other than that, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Bye. bye.